So I'm going to just run through quite briefly um, what your Enneagram test results are and what, and what it means. And then we're going to go through the nine different types. And it's okay if you haven't um, done the Enneagram test. As we go through the nine different types, you'll be able to see uh, pictorially what those types are. And hopefully you will be able to identify your own type from uh, my type descriptions. So I'm going to talk a little about, bit about MBTI because MBTI is a more common and more widely used than uh, in the Enneagram. And um, as an MBTI instructor, the official test results are only around 50% accurate. And so what I would imagine when you look at the Enneagram, which goes far more deeper than MBTI, your Enneagram test results are probably going to be even less than 50% accurate. Because the Enneagram me measures observable external behaviors, and the tests don't really or easily test for your internal drives and motivations. So why is the Enneagram test results not so accurate? Well, when you first take the test, you go through all the questions, the chances are you may not understand uh, some of the questions, and you will understand exactly what um, the questions are asking you. Um, and you have maybe haven't thought about the area of life before. And it's the first time you've been asked this question and you're not quite sure how to understand it. Third reason is you don't know whether to answer those questions whether in a work setting or home setting or with your friends. And sometimes that confuses you and you may not be able to answer the test that accurately. Uh, the question itself doesn't accurately apply. And the questions actually only that can be answered yes or no by more than one Enneagram type. So something is quite interesting with the Enneagram is the dynamic system. So the Enneagram is such that you can move around on all the different points on the diagram. And what the Enneagram does is to show that you're functioning at a point on the Enneagram, sometimes that may be different to your home point. And because of stress, you may move along the arrows, such as the stress points here, like one may move to four under stress, four moves to two under stress, two moves to eight. And you can keep moving around the Enneagram, so you may end up at a point that is very different from your home point based on the level of stress you're under. And let's face it, now in this busy city which we live in, you know, who's not under a lot of stress? And as a result, you're going to move around the Enneagram. Um, also under relaxed conditions, they what they call growth conditions, you may move in the opposite direction of the Enneagram. So rather than one moving to four under stress, four moves to one when you're under relaxed conditions. Two will move to uh, four um, as a, under more relaxed conditions. So with the Enneagram, so you're all starting off, you maybe took the test, you got one number. But the important thing is because you may move around the Enneagram, it doesn't really matter where you start. As you become to work with yourself, you become, begin to know yourself better, then you will start to realize um, that you would move at a, at a different point and you may end up somewhere completely different. Maybe a few years from now, maybe 10 years from now, you may be at a different point from where you started off with your self-discovery journey. And that, over time, may start to become your home point. So it's how you finish. So some of the additional difficulties in finding your type. Now we want to look at this diagram, which is the original Enneagram diagram. Um, so each type is a combination of five to six different points. For example, if you look at type three um, on the right, three is attached to two and four. Three is also attached to six and nine. So three is in itself is attached to four other points apart from the home point. And because you're, you're attached to, to these numbers, they may be part of your core point three. And the same thing applies for every other type. So if you, you tested maybe at nine, you actually are a combination of eight and one, as well as the two other points on the triangle, which is attached to point nine, which is three and six. And this is just using one diagram, the, the original Enneagram on which there are three triangles. If you look at most of the Enneagram textbooks, however, It'd be what showing you what's known as the process Enneagram, which is the Enneagram diagram here. So if you look at point one, one is not going to be part of the 147 triangle on the process Enneagram as much. It's going to be a bit more open-ended. And point um, 
four, there's a line to two there, for example. So that's not on the post, uh, the original Enneagram, it's on the process Enneagram. So four is actually attached to six points. So four, for example, will be attached to three, five, one, and seven on the original Enneagram. And on the process Enneagram, four has an additional line to two. So four is actually a combination of six different types that you can get to just one movement of the lines. You can get to any point on the lines through the circumference of the circle and so on, but just from one line you can at attach to six different points. Does that make sense? And another reason is why it's so difficult in finding a type. You will pass through all nine types in childhood to on to early development. You, there's some uh, childhood psychologists have looked at the Enneagram and you start at point nine and you can move along in an anti-clockwise direction, nine up to one on the ages of zero to five. So you will pass through all different points. So there's something to note. When we go through the nine different types in my presentation, you will see and you may probably resonate with quite a lot of the different attributes of the different types. And that's quite natural because you will have passed through all the types and you will have a parts of that personality in, your, in yourself that you will show up in the world and you may use in the world, but you may not use it as much as perhaps you used to. A third point is you may be adopting a strategy other than your home strategy to survive in everyday life. Um, so if your core point is two, for example, you may be operating at one or three because it's much easier to, to, to survive than being at core point two because your needs of your current work, your home situation, or your current environment may necess necessitate that you function at a point other than your home type. So it's very important to notice the movements that can happen. And as mentioned, you can get through any point for the lines of circumference of the circle. Uh, fifth point is quite interesting, is how you see yourself is often different from how others see you. So you, you may think you are a certain way, but if you ask all your friends and, and relatives and family, they may see you as a completely different way. So when it comes to self-identification, you may look at your type and you will start to think that, oh, maybe that's me or maybe that's not me. But if you ask your best friend or your, your family member, they may say, oh, that's you. And then you'll be like, I never realized that was me. Um, I never saw myself in that way. But if you ask a lot of people, they may see you a lot differently from, from how you see yourself. And there's also a great difficulty in, in identifying your internal drivers, um, especially the not so attractive aspects and part of uh, personality typing and so on is that you may encounter some parts of your type as you read type descriptions that you may um, not wish to be identified with. It may be easier to identify with another type because sometimes it's, it's too raw when you read some of the stuff. It's, uh, it kind of exposes um, vulnerabilities which you may not be aware of or will not want to acknowledge in yourself. And that makes it harder to identify your home type. And the, the final point, seven, is no one really wants to be their type. Um, you look through all the, the nine different types, you're going to find other types that are more attractive to you, and you may want to be that other type instead. And because you've lived with yourself your whole life, you know like your strengths and your weaknesses, and you may not want to have those weaknesses. You may want to be another type that's much stronger or maybe more intelligent or more controlled or more emotional or more passionate or more peace-loving than yourself. And those are all interesting aspects that you are, but you may not want to acknowledge that as your home type. Okay, so let's get on to the nine types of the Enneagram. So we're going to go through all nine types and I'm going to give you a few different pointers on how to find your type throughout this presentation. So it's going to be pretty interactive. Uh, it's not just going to be me uh, talking here for an hour. Um, you're going to be also taking some, some notes as we go along so you can kind of have a in, work your mind and your internal thought processes on how to um, find your type. So I'm going to go through all nine types. And for each of the nine types, I want you to score on this piece of paper. That's why I've got a piece of paper and a pen. Um, you're going to see eight images for each type. And I'm going to give type descriptions about those images and what they actually mean to the nine types. So when you score like type one, for example, um, you're gonna score this type on a scale of one to five. 
So one, when you look at all the eight images, you realize that none of the images are like you. Two would be a few of the images are like you. Can you identify with some of the descriptions that, about that type? Three would be some of the images are like you, but some are not. So it's kind of in between. Four would be quite a lot of the images are like you. And five would be most of the images are like me. You kind of really identify with this type. And if there's any confusion, uh, I have to go, go through it at the end. Okay, so let's begin the nine types of the Enneagram. Enneagram type one. Ones are good people, both internally and externally. And something or someone is good if it is what it is and it does what it's supposed to do. Ones have a strong inner sense of knowing what right and wrong is. They are motivated not just to do good, but to be good. And they're motivated to live their lives accordingly to a higher good and a higher vision. Ones value excellence, and they make quality control experts. They have high standards and can automatically notice what needs improving. Ones are also generally organized people. They are tidy and they often have a system for their life. They like having a place for everything and everything in its place. Ones are hardworking and they work hard to make an honest living. They see possibilities in people and situations, and they push to make their internal vision a reality. So you've got this spick and span household here. So their homes are often neat and tidy, and they work tirelessly in their jobs and their roles. Ones are also generally punctual people, because it's just not good to be late and have other people wait for you. Ones are meticulous, and they take care with their work. So whether it's just trimming a hedge like this lady here, something has just got to have the right look or the right feel. Ones are body types. If you look on the Enneagram diagram here, eight, nine, and one are body types. And there's an internal body sensation that tells them that things are just right. They pay attention to detail and are efficient and practical as well as being idealistic and having high standards. Ones continually advance towards the ideal, and they know what perfection feels like. They're geared towards progress and moving forwards, and have a passion for doing things well and carrying them out to the best of their ability. Ones want to perfect every ability they have been given, just like a sushi chef here, takes many years to train. They dedicate a lot of time and energy to perfecting their craft. For you can always tweak something and refine it to make it better. Ones create order. They're often active in the social arena and making social reforms. They have strong principles and they know what to do and they will teach you what to do. Ones can bring order out of chaos. For example, getting the kids to line up single file as they leave the school bus. Ones are educators, and they hold high standards for themselves and others. They are mature and responsible, strict with others, but most strict with themselves. Ones feel compelled to interact and instruct others on the best way to accomplish things, so that they can reach their potential too. Their high standards applies to themselves, their kids, their spouse, and their friends, or even members of the public. There's often a zealousness to ones. They have a strong inner conviction, and they engage on a mission to making the world a better place. So here's the image of the proverbial white knight on a quest to rid the world of evil and replacing it with good. Ones are activists and it can help introduce the rule of law and religion to places where there are none, so that the human spirit can shine through and make a difference. So 
So that's Enneagram Type 1. So you can score on a scale of 1 to 5 how well that resonates with you. Shall we move on to Type 2? Anyone need more time? Okay. Enneagram Type 2. Twos are giving people. They're warm, they're gentle and kind-hearted, and they move towards people in affection. Twos are over also loving people, and they give of themselves to relationships that are meaningful to them. They're also pleasant and helpful people who are dedicated and devoted to those they love and care about. Twos are over often the most responsive people to meet your physical needs. They even may know what you need before you know it yourself. They're tuned to other people, and if you break down crying, twos will probably be the first to hand you a tissue and hold a mirror up so you can stop the mascara dripping down your face. Twos are your friend you can always count on, and they intuitively can sense if you're hungry or tired or just want to rest. Twos are helpful people. They genuinely want to be of service and rescue those who are in distress. They're able to quickly step in and save those in need. For example, a fireman who's called to rescue a cat stuck up a tree. In organizations, twos know how everything is run, but from behind the scenes, supporting the front person. CEOs just can't do without them because they know where everything is and the roles that everyone in the organization plays. They are the glue that helps the company run smoothly. Along with fours, two is now in the heart center. We're moving from the body center to the heart center. So twos as part of the heart center are the romantics of the Enneagram. And they often have a classical view of romance. It's a boy meets girl, he sweeps for after feet, and they fall madly in love. Romance can also come from everyday interactions, and if not, there's just plenty of romance novels or movies which can help evoke fresh emotions of love. On the other hand, twos are repulsed by cruelty and don't like to watch violent programs or horror movies on TV. Twos are empathetic. They intuitively know what others are feeling, what they need, and what they want. If you've fallen over and hurt your leg, they instinctively know how to take care of you. Twos know what to say or do, and they know how to make you feel comfortable. They're compassionate, and for them, it's better to give than to receive. Twos are people who are gifted at connecting with others. They love making new connections with people, and they also thrive on connecting people who don't know each other together. At a social, social event, what the two looks forward to will be all the good connections that they could be making and all the interesting people they, they could meet there. Twos are likable people who instinctively know how to please others. They can sense just how different people are and they know exactly what individuals need. And they have the ability, intuitive ability to act in a way that can cheer someone up or say something nice that can warm someone's heart. Twos are most sensitive to relationships though, and they enjoy being close to someone, whether it's as a special friend or partner. They know how to build people up, nurture them, and bring out their strengths. Twos spend a considerable amount of time on relationships, whether it is with their family or old friends, or investing in their time and energy in cultivating new friendships. So that's Enneagram Type 2. Enneagram Type 3. Threes are productive individuals. They have a gift for finding a more effective way to do things. The combined harvester here is probably a three invention. And threes work hard and enjoy producing a lot in a short space of time. 
These are accomplished. They apply themselves tirelessly to their work and often rise to positions of leadership. Being in this position allows them to achieve more and accomplish more. Threes work hard to make the world a better place. And you can always count on the three to deliver as they move towards making their dream a reality. Threes make efficient use of their time and they're always on the move. So if threes are the ones who are multitasking and doing many things at the same time. They're typing while walking, replying to an email while having breakfast. Threes make the most out of every minute of time. They have many irons in the fire and are normally multitasking with an abundance of various activities going on at the same time. Threes have a laser-like focus. They can hone in on whatever needs to be done and then they can focus all their energy on bringing it to pass. Many leaders and CEOs are threes. And with so many things to be done as the leader of a company, a three will help to focus the energy of the group and guide the rest of the employees, showing them the way to go. In a boardroom, the threes would be focused on directly hashing out all the issues. And after the meeting, the work can then be delegated so everyone knows what they're doing. Threes are competent individuals. In their chosen field, they can find out everything they can and becoming the best they can. They are capable people who are always learning and improving themselves. Threes take what they learn and immediately put it into action. And they're not afraid to experiment with new ways of doing things in order to find a better way. They appear confident and through trial and error, eventually they find the method that works. Threes are driven, seeking to be the best in their field, not just in business, but in the sporting arena as well. So not all top athletes are threes, but many are, and they put thousands of hours into being the best in their field. They enjoy competing at the highest level and pushing the limits of what can be accomplished by a human being. So whether it's running the 100 meters in under 10 seconds or slam dunking the ball or win the, winning major championships, the three will be driving hard and working hard and are often successful in whatever they set out to do. So at the center of the heart center, so two, three, and four, three is at the center of the heart center. Threes are said to have the biggest heart of all. They often use this success, wealth, and accomplishments and share it with their loved ones and friends and society as a whole. So whether in the form of gifts or charity option, auctions or setting up foundations for the poor, sick, and needy, you can find threes involved in all kinds of ways of giving back. Threes are also inspiring in terms of demonstrating to others what is possible. They share their wisdom, experience and accomplishments by inspiring younger kids and the underprivileged. Threes will teach them what they know and how to do things better and engage in activities such as mentoring and coaching the young generation in areas such as business and sport. So that's uh, Enneagram Type 3. Enneagram Type 4. Fours are creative people. They work hard to make the world a more beautiful place with their original and artistic creations. So even if they may not formally practice art, they're drawn to the cultures and the arts. For them, life itself is art. Their creativity may be expressed in writing, to poetry or novels, or in creating fantasy worlds. It may also be on the stage in theatre or in making movies and documentaries. Fours are artistic people. They are also familiar with pain and suffering. So whereas twos are more familiar with the sunnier side of the emotions of the heart, say the other end of the the heart, two, three, and four. Fours are more familiar with the darker aspects of the heart. Like Vincent van Gogh cut off his ear and then painted the self-portrait expressing his exploration of the shadow side of the human existence. Fours express themselves uniquely and they feel deeply. Being authentic to how they feel is important to them even if it means expressing strong emotions 
such as hate, like this guy here, and anger. Twos, on the other hand, typically do not express the emotions such as these. And fours can be also quite dramatic in how they dress or behave, dressing to express a particular emotion of what they are feeling. They need to be true to themselves. There's a mysterious quality about fours. They often don't feel that the world understands them. They are lingering on the outside, looking in. Fours search for their origin and their real identity. They are often very sensitive people. They may look out on the world, like this guy here, with longing, with a mysterious air and quality about them, looking for what's missing. They resonate with the moods of life, the highs and the lows, and the light and the dark. Fours understand melancholy and longing. There's a sweetness in looking for what is missing in life and how things, and so there's some of the things that could never be. There's a familiar feeling that something has been lost. They were loved ones, but where did that love go? Absence makes the heart grow fonder, and no more so than when fours are the proverbial lover waiting for their ideal future mate. Perhaps like this girl here. Fours endeavour to be original in what they do. They are expressive and imaginative individuals. They often have a classy sense of style with great taste in fabrics and a beautiful choice of colours. Fours themselves are a work of art in progress, and how is, that is how they present themselves to the world. They often make great interior designers and decorators, putting their distinctive touch and flair into their work, making it original and personal. Fours live life with passion. They want to be completely immersed in some pursuit, such as music in this case here, and they engage in this activity with intensity using their whole heart and passion. It is dramatic, but it's ultimately an expression of total fulfillment as the artist merges with his or her work. Fours can take something seemingly small and insignificant and transform it into something passionate meaningful, beautiful, and authentic. Fours experience extreme emotional highs and extreme emotional lows. They experience a range of intense emotions and their familiarity with them, especially the darker emotions, makes fours equipped to deal with emotional crises and helping people process their deep emotions, such as anger, grief, loss, sadness, and so on. They often end up in counselling or therapy professions where they can put their skills to use in navigating the emotional terrain. So that's the Enneagram Type 4. Enneagram Type 5. Fives are knowledgeable and they have a mind that is like a vacuum for information. They will thoroughly investigate whatever subject interests them, knowing things in an amazing amount of detail. Fives normally have a large collection of books, and they are strongly attached to models and systems that explain how people interact with each other. In contrast to their neighbours, the fours, so we're moving from the heart centre now to the mind centre. Five, six, and seven are the, the mental triads. So in contrast to the neighbours, the fours, fives are the most emotionally withdrawn types. They withdraw physically from the world, like this monk here, to be alone with their thoughts and away from all the distractions of people and emotions. Fives can sit meditating alone for hours and are good at detaching from all the emotions that seem to run other people's lives. They just seem not to be as affected as much by them.
Fives are observant people and they notice things in their surroundings. They enjoy seeking understanding and putting pieces of the puzzle together. They observe nature, like this man here, and animals, and explore ideas and concepts in the mind. Fives have also the ability to detach from a conversation. So when they're having a conversation, you can, you can detach from it, and they can observe themselves talking to the other person as if they were someone else watching from the outside. So that's quite a unique ability that fives have. Fives are independent people and can get by very easily by themselves. They don't expect much of others and are able to go about looking after their own needs. Fives enjoy working alone and looking after themselves, going about their business in their own way. They also prepare in advance so that any situation that they may be depleted or they may be drained is minimized. Fives are often wise and inventive. After studying a subject for many years, often in solitude, they can become experts in it. Then they create ideas where they can lead to breakthrough in many fields such as medicine, science and philosophy. Fives can also provide thought leadership and ideas that can help humanity as a whole advance. Fives have very modest needs and are self-sufficient. They can get by alone with very little need for human contact. They can get the food they need to survive and are comfortable and content with less. Fives are quite happy to do their own thing and are resourceful in getting what they want without involving anyone else. In the same way, they do not want others to demand too much of them. Fives are intellectual and experts in their field. They enjoy sharing their knowledge with others, but especially those who can understand their thoughts. So fives are often found in academia, where their vast intellect is shared with students or other experts in their field. Fives can be very private people and rarely are attracted to wealth and material things. They could spend a lot of time in isolation from the world. This house on a rock in the middle of the lake would be the dream home of many fives. So in their private room here, without anyone around them, they're able to slowly get in touch with their feelings and process them more easily. So that's the Enneagram 5. So anyone need more time to process the First five, or we're all good. Four more to go. Anyone confused? Found your type yet? Anyone? We're waiting to see the last four. Okay, Enneagram type six. Sixes are loyal people, loyal to their family, friends, and country. When a six gives you their word about something, you can count on them to keep it. They take their words seriously, and they can honour their pledge and commitments. And if it's required of them, they may very well join the army and give their lives for the country. Six are, sixes are willing to sacrifice themselves for others. Just as this man here, he doesn't mind getting all wet so his young son can stay dry. They will go all out of their way for someone they believe in and they don't mind going down with the ship for that person. Sixes also sacrifice himself for others, for their family, devoting much time and energy in putting the needs of their, their family above their own. So they call their elderly parents, they visit them dutifully, and appear at family functions. They also join in at family celebrations, and often you can count on the sixes to remember the birthdays of all their family members. Many sixes also report not wanting to leave their nest and they just want to live near or near to or with their families.
So you can always count on a six to be prepared. So if you're going camping, a six will be prepared for every scenario. What could go wrong? What do I wear if it gets cold? What if there are insects? How much water do you need? Sixes have the ability to foresee the whole range of different things that could happen and have just what you need in those worst case scenarios. So when sixes prepare for a party, they can work tirelessly behind the scenes, helping everything run smoothly and planning for every contingency. Sixes are dutiful. Many are obedient and listen to authority and authority figures. They make good followers and do what is required of them. Six, sixes are faithful to their leaders in power, serving them tirelessly. And once they believe and they trust in someone, they can often follow them without hesitation. They work well with a clearly defined chain of command. Who do I report to? And who is the ultimate head of the organization? Sixes have a gift for questioning. With a great respect for law and order, many consider themselves to be law-abiding citizens. They may pledge their loyalty to larger institutions and governmental organizations, and will work dutifully to uphold the law. Sixes have a natural sense for danger and will question others to get to the bottom of things. They will happily play devil's advocate and find the truth of the matter. And with their questioning, it's easy for them to find holes in someone's argument or statement. Sixes have a great respect for the will of authority and they often find themselves in law enforcement. Feeling safe is of paramount importance to a six. They have a mentality of us versus them. It's safe on one side of the wall here, and it's dangerous on the other side. They will try to the best of their ability to keep themselves and those they care about safe. So where physical safety is concerned, sixes will often set up CCTV coverage around their home, and they will know what are all the safe foods to eat and they will also know how to protect themselves from danger. They also find safety in numbers and join larger groups and organizations in which, with which they have an affinity to. Sixes make great problem solvers. They spend a lot of time trying to find answers and certainties to all the questions in their head. So again, you've got a picture of this six with the stuff going on in the head. Six is the center of the mental triad, five, six, and seven. So it's mind-centered and it's a very powerful mind. They can do a lot of things with their brain because they're the head of the mental center, just as threes are the head of it. the center of the heart center, then the center of the mental center. So six is, as a result of this, they can make excellent problem solvers. They spend a lot of time trying to find answers and certainty to all the questions in their head. They focus on what could go wrong and what the worst case scenarios are. And at work, they function well in areas such as risk management and safety. Sixes are drawn to underdog causes. So at the same time as being law-abiding in, in many areas, other sixes have a great distrust for authority and they oppose those in power. So these sixes rebel against the law and as a result, they may take the position of the underdog, fighting, fighting against the bigger, larger institutions of the law. So they can take an interest with the down and out, the disenfranchised, and those who have been largely overlooked by society as a whole. They extend a helping hand to the poor and needy, those who have been left out by the governments. So Enneagram Type 7. Sevens like to have fun, and they appear upbeat as the most joyful type of the Enneagram. They're upbeat, optimistic, and adventurous. So what is important to sevens is to have fun and experience as much of life as possible. Sevens love to try new things and travel broadly to find new sources of endless excitement. They're often the life of the party, and where they go, the sunshine follows. 
Sevens have an enthusiastic and optimistic outlook to life. Like the colours of the rainbow, there's always something interesting to be doing in life. They are resourceful in coming up with something new and creative to occupy themselves with. You can always find them enjoying the many pleasures of life. Sevens always seem to have a way in which they can spice up their lives, inject something new and playful into their surroundings. Sevens have a natural charm and this makes them charismatic individuals. If you ask them how they are doing, they'll simply reply, I couldn't be better. They put on a happy face and carry with them comedy, jokes, smiles and laughter. Sevens are engaging, fond of company and talkative. They're easily fascinated by their own ideas and in turn, people are captivated by their charisma. Sevens are the eternal child and they experience life like a gift. They're constantly playing and when they're not, they're mentally engaged in planning for the next great adventure and where the biggest fireworks in life are to be found. Sevens are like Disney's Peter Pan or Mary Poppins here and they always have a youthful energy about them. They express a childlike astonishment and that makes them love having fun the way kids do. Sevens are visionary people who often have a grand plan for the future. They dream big and are full of hope of how the world can be a better, happier and more pleasurable place. They're fascinated by future possibilities and love imagining what life would be like. For Sevens, life is like Disneyland, full of miracles and surprises and just waiting to happen. In their mind, they can see a better tomorrow and that makes them love brainstorming and coming up with creative ideas and solutions to a problem. Many Sevens are inspirational people and they speak in a highly enthusiastic and exuberant manner. With a positive outlook, they have the ability to lift people's spirits up and they make excellent storytellers. Sevens also engage in motivational speaking. They are natural communicators and they take to the stage well. With their light-hearted and funny anecdotes, they enjoy entertaining people and seeing others smile and laugh with them. Sevens have a bright, bubbly spirit and rarely allow themselves to get down and depressed. They bounce right back up like colourful helium balloons. Sevens believe that life is beautiful and if the present environment doesn't offer anything fascinating for them, they can easily retreat to the pleasures of their mind of which there are no restrictions. There's just an unlimited number of fun things to think about and in the mind, anything is possible. Sevens are multi-talented and have a wide range of interests. With a quick and agile mind, they can learn new skills with little effort. So whether it's a new sport, a musical instrument, dance or a new job, Sevens try everything enjoyable in life and they are the modern renaissance person. So that's Enneagram Type 7. Enneagram Type 8. Eights are strong. So we're moving from the mental center to the body center. Eights just on the edge of the body center. So eights can be either physically strong, as in the world's strongest man here, or intellectually strong. They want to be in charge or in control and have the most raw energy out of any type on the Enneagram. Eights want to be a position where they command power, and once they're there, they want to increase it and keep whatever power they have for as long as possible. Eights are tough and extraordinarily resilient. They're able to absorb a lot of physical punishment without complaint. They move relentlessly forwards, carrying the weight of others on their shoulder, quite literally here. Um, but more often than not, metaphoric, metaphorically. Eights see themselves as a solid rock that cannot be broken down. 
They are so action-oriented and quick to show up when there's an obstacle to conquer. So apes are streetwise and they protect themselves to ensure their own survival. With a high amount of confidence, they work hard to defend themselves and avoid being hurt. Apes often appear stony and are moved by difficulties. They often enjoy seeing how others will stand up under pressure. To an eight, the truth comes out in a fight. Eights are fearless in the face of danger, and they put themselves wholeheartedly into doing what they're doing. They find a thrill to take on a difficult challenge, for example, like parachuting off a plane and diving deep into enemy territory. Eights are also good at engaging others to a cause, drawing out their strengths, courage, and conviction. They're brave in the face of danger and they'll often test the boundaries of people they work with to know whether their friendships are trustworthy and stable. Eights are independent and they value being their own person and doing their own thing. They're autonomous and rugged individuals who do not want to be indebted to anybody. They also work alone, looking out for themselves and defending their territory. Aids go about meeting their own survival needs and go about getting enough money and power to ensure their own well-being and that of their loved ones. They take the initiative and make all the decisions using their power as a defense against the world. Aids are not afraid to take risks and overcome difficult challenges. So you're wondering what these guys are doing here. These are Marines undergoing training and they're being put through what's known as a drown test. So with their hands tied behind their, ha their, their, their backs and their feet and ankles tied, they have to perform various tasks like floating on water. So AIDS love overcoming these challenges as it reinforces their feelings of invincibility. AIDS want to make the world a more just and fair place. We're in the courts of law out on the streets, they want things to be more equitable, balancing the skills of justice where necessary. Aids often rise to positions of leadership in government and business. They are no-nonsense people, and they do not let other people, people's opinion of them sway them at all. So Aids use their strength to protect and defend the weak, and they are not afraid to challenge them directly. In court, for example, they stand up for their rights and they enjoy lively discussions and a good argument. They know how to press people's vulnerabilities and are keen to find out how they would react. Aids don't beat around the bush and they get straight to the point. They're clear, direct and forceful in their communication and they're not afraid to let others know what they think of them. So that's Enneagram Type 8. Anyone found their type yet? Or waiting for the last one. Enneagram type 9. Nines are peaceful. They are laid back, easygoing people who are down to earth and comfortable with themselves. Nines enjoy chilling out, just lying in a hammock with their favorite comforts such as food and drink nearby, and just allowing the world to pan out around them as they enjoy each moment as it comes. Nines go about their lives in a calm, untroubled and unhurried manner. Nothing seems to disturb them. And even if everyone around them is overreacting and stressed out, they're able to keep their cool. Nines are accepting of people as they are and are even-tempered and non-threatening. They're often flustered in the face of adversity. And they often have a common philosophy to deal with troubles and situations. Why get too excited or upset? Life is short. Nines are low key and they don't want to stand out. So they don't take themselves too seriously and they're modest people, content in staying in the background and not causing any inconvenience to others. Nines are also patient with a quiet strength and tremendous endurance. So nine is the center of the body center. And some people say that the, which is the strongest type of the Enneagram. Nines are the strongest type of the Enneagram.
So this center of the body, once they decide not to move, you can't move them. So they're patient with a quiet strength and tremendous endurance. They're modest people and they rarely come across as opinionated or pushy. Nines just go with the flow and are accommodating individuals, making it easy for them to go along with the plans of others. They may participate in group activities like cycling, which helps them be part of the group and get in touch with their bodies and just hang out doing things together. Nines also don't like to rock the boat and that makes them welcome in many social situations. Nines are naturally adaptive and they don't make a big fuss of things and they can naturally adapt to their surroundings. They adopt the live and let live philosophy and try not to make a big deal out of life itself. Nines have a forgiving nature and are always willing to give others the benefit of the doubt and are often looking for positive interpretations to any situation. Nines want things to be comfortable and they often go through comfortable routines. They like experiencing something familiar on a regular basis, like in the concrete activities they regularly partake in, such as here, going to playing on the slot machines, give them a sense of calm and stability. Nines often have pastimes that give them comfort, so whether it's going to the casino, computer games, arts and crafts, hobbies, gardening, and so on, these pastimes give them a great deal of comfort. Nines blend in to their surroundings and they have an ability to bring and unify people together. They fit into the environment and they don't need to be special and they don't like to bring attention to themselves. Nines identity is with others, either at work, family or friends. So as long as those around them are okay, they are okay. Nines give off a steady and reassuring presence. They're grounded individuals and create space for others, holding a place for others to come out. Nines also make good mediators and they're easily able to see the validity in all different points of view. They help everyone move towards a common goal and they do this by helping others get along better with each other, tempering down the anger of others and creating harmony around them. So that's the Enneagram Type 9. So I'll give you a, a moment to, uh, to, to look at your list of nine and see uh, which ones you scored the most highly on in your self-assessment. <laughs> 